So we're here at uh, Linaro Connect and uh, hi, so who are you? My name is Ishai, I'm from Shiratek Israel, part of AY Group. And we are very happy to be here. We are uh, very intrigued because it's very interesting for us. We have a lot of new developments, a lot of new plans working with 96 boards. And I think this is a good start because this is the first time we are having here, being here in beautiful Vancouver doing cooperation with so, uh, so, boards. so you're doing a lot of different mezzanine boards, right? A lot of mezzanine boards. Some of them are here. Some of them are going to be defined and showed in the yeah. in the near future. And uh, Guy, please, Guy is working with me. He's the VP R and D of our company. I'm the CEO, and Guy is going to introduce us to several boards. So, uh, what is the background of the company? What is the main purpose of the company? Uh, Shiratek does SOMs and SBC boards for two varieties. We do smart boards and we do, of course, 96 boards and a combination of both and future designs. And we are part of AY Electronics, which is a very manufacturing in Israel. So actually, everything we do, we do inside. We do full turnkey. We do manufacturing, purchasing, assembly and design, everything in-house for our company. And does it have a lot to do with the cellular and that kind of technology or not we necessarily also sensor? Do, we also, because we are vendors and we are as our manufacturers, we are working closely for many companies in the world such as Quicktel. So we developed the first LTE boards based on from the 96 boards, mezzanines and also NBIOT boards based on Quicktel and this is some of the boards that you can show here today. All right, thanks. Thanks a lot. So, so hi, so who are you? Okay, hi, my name is Guy Zohar and I'm uh, responsible for the R&D in Tech Solutions. So, uh, what is the collaboration you have with Lenaro? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> Ramon will discuss. Yeah. Uh, we are uh, participating here as um, partners of 96 boards and uh, so you asked before, Shai, what, what is the focus of Shiratech? So one side is, is a system on modules and the other is, um, is the 96 boards, the mezzanines. These mezzanines that you can see, we have several here. Here we have uh, an FPGA mezzanine. So which one is that? This is the FPGA <laughs> mezzanine, this one yeah. here in my hand, which what it does, it's, uh, it's a bridge uh, between uh, interfaces that, like for example, Arduino shields that I can put here, which connect to them all kind of uh, sensors, and the bridge between them and different processor boards, like for example the Arrow Dragon board that I have here on my hand. But returning to what we are doing here, so we are developing these 96 uh, board mezzanines, which allow developers to add more and more applications um, easily. Yeah. Uh, and doing the projects uh, fast. So what they can do instead of develop um, their own sensors and hardware, they're using different mezzanines on top of processor boards. And that enables them to have access to a lot of uh, uh, resources like uh, whether it's sensors, uh, uh, um, different interfaces, dry contacts. And uh, so we, for example, we have here uh, LTE. So this is a fast speed LTE by QuickTel. It has also different sensors on it. Below it is another LTE mezzanine which is for low power. So it's a CAT category M1 NB1 mezzanine. So for example you can select a high speed for an application like uh, a camera, for example a security camera or face detection uh, that you want to transmit it over the cellular network. Okay. And below it, the CAT M1 is more for an IoT application. It's low bandwidth, but it's low power. So, for example, if you're going to have a, a sensor in the ground that needs to operate on a, on a battery for five years, yeah. so this is the right platform for you to choose. So NB IoT is a low, low power consumption? Well, today IoT is everything, but when, when I refer to IoT, mainly it's uh, low power, low bandwidth sensors that um, try to actually uh, provide information about the uh, physical um, entities around you. Okay, so that's what I mean. So, uh, you, you, you're basically expanding, like let's say, the Dragon Board, you're expanding it to do all kinds of more stuff. Is that what you do? That's so, what Mezzanine is about, right? Yes, yeah, so the, this is the 96 board concept that you have one... Uh, so how do you connect it? So you have Sorry. here, you, as you can see, 
You have here the connectors, there's a high speed and a low speed connector. And I just uh, connected between them, as you can see, just connect it. Okay, so I can have one, and then I can have another one on top of it. Really, three? So I can connect, actually, this one, is, it's an Arduino one, yeah. so you have an Arduino over the mezzanine, yeah. over a dragon. But if I had, for example, this one, this is a Bosch sensor, and I yeah. would put it over here, and then I can take over it an LLTE mezzanine, as you can see. So I have already a three-board sandwich, as you can see, the processor board, the bus sensor and the LTE sensor, the, the LTE mezzanine. And this, uh, as you can see, and in each mezzanine is a functionality. So I have a functionality on top of a functionality on top of a processor. And, and again, this allows you to develop more and more yeah. applications. So if you think of it, uh, the connectivity, sensors, processor, and part of it another a sensor. So it's endless applications that you can um, connect and develop very fast. So this is actually the concept of the 96, it's not our concept, it's yeah. the 96 board concept. And we are happy to be a partner and to um, add our boards to this fast growing community. So, um, uh, for example, the, the, so there's a dragon board under there, yes, but then you're one. connecting an FPGA to it or not? Yes, so that's the, a separate the, board. this is the FPGA. How, so how, do, how does the FPGA work together with the dragon board? So actually, the FPGA, as an FPGA, provides the flexibility of a, a programmable hardware. Yeah. Um, so you can say it's agnostic to the processor because you can add any interface or you can boost uh, your speed by using the FPGA. But it still works together because in the end you need to, up to connect it and the processor, the Dragon board in the end, will control whatever you do on FPGA. So, of course, in the end, it, it is one application. So, so th that it is looks like you're doing a lot of different things, and also you have a, a Bosch. Uh, yes. What is that? So, the, the Bosch sensor, uh, you can see it here in a minute. I just... <laughs> yeah. So, on the Bosch sensors, let's put your head here. Yeah. I just have quite a lot of uh, interfaces here, uh, yeah. sensors, sorry. I don't remember all, all, all the names of it. So you can see that we have uh, one minute. Here. So you can see here the different sensors that you have here. You have a, a pressure and temperature sensor. Yeah. You have a triaxial accelerator. You have a, a gas and humidity pressure sensor. Yeah. You can see here the block diagram. Usually that will interest the, the engineers, the block diagram. So you have a collection of different sensors. All made by Bosch. Yes, all made by, by Bosch. So, of course, we, we work together with Bosch for that. But in the end, it's what really is important that there are different sensors for different applications that a developer can use. That's the bottom line for it. Nice. And uh, can we talk some more with your, uh, uh, th these guys, they're also in your team, right? So So these guys are, here's a voice actor guy or voice actor to me. Yeah, can you introduce more about what, what kind of engineering is going on and uh, uh, what, are you, what are you doing with, the, with your colleagues around here? Okay, so these guys are from Aero Electronics, yeah? which uh, in this show we are partnering together with them. And uh, this is Wojtek from Aero Electronic. Yep. So hi, so who are you? So, so I am Wojtek, I am a software developer. And uh, basically my task was to prepare the software running on this hardware. So uh, so now we have the, let's say, the Dragon board with the say, standard uh, Linux from the Linaro. It's a Debian. And so we have the LT sheet which was enabled uh, uh, and it's streaming the data. Uh, I'm just going to run the software so you will see the result shortly. But basically we are testing the speed, but now uh, you catch me on setting up the modem, so that is why it's not connected. But, and uh, the second demo I'm running, so I'm, first of all we are just checking the speed of the, of the modem. The second demo, on top of that we are sending the telemetry data from the shield 
itself because it, it has also some sensors on it. But also from the second chip you have here, from this is from the ST, and we have here the Arduino format, and you have the 96 board, so we are connected these two boards by the FPGA. And the software here is also uh, here I built the built the Linux uh, by, by the Yocto, let's say Yocto project. And to enable SPI, uh, etc. So uh, here we are taking the, the, I think the temperature and humidity uh, from the sensor from the ST shield and sending to the cloud. Here we are doing this this by the Wi-Fi, this by the LTE. At the end, this is going to the Microsoft Azure, where the all data are processed, and uh, we run the machine uh, machine learning algorithm, which is predicting the the weather. Let's say so it's taking the temperature, humidity, and I think the uh, the the lights the, the yeah I think that the, the light because you can put it outside so not so this is not the best place to test it and uh, we can predict what kind of weather we have. So, so did you uh, did you did you have some kind of cloud system that does all this? You do everything through the cloud, or what are you doing? So basically, the data are sent from the board over the Wi-Fi or, or over the LTE, and the data are, are let's say, sent to the IoT hub from Microsoft Azure, and then uh, we are sending the data over the function, which is defined on the stream analytic, which is defined on Microsoft Azure, to the machine learning, uh, machine learning again from the Microsoft, and uh, the data are being processed and the model was trained also on the Microsoft Azure. We, I used the pre-trained model. And according to that, uh, at the end, we have some zero and one. One is the rain, zero is there is no rain. And is this the, uh, is this the what's called a, a, a open source, available for yeah, everybody so who buys this? Yeah, so the site from the Microsoft site, so this is available. Okay, you, you just need the, the subscription to get it. But basically, I think the project I did is open source, so you don't even have the, the money for that. And uh, um, so uh, around here, is because, um, uh, um, so yeah, you with Arrow, right? Yeah. So Arrow is doing a lot of uh, uh, providing all this kind of technology to people. Yeah. And uh, there's a partnership going on right now with Shiratech. Yes. To get all their mezzanine to work on the 96 boards. Yes. Uh, yeah, so basically Arrow is buying from the shield, I think the shields, and the Arrow is a specific of the Arrow. We are giving away a lot of shields uh, and the boards during the, a lot of events, because our, every week we have some events going on. Where? Uh, so around the Europe, I think, uh, maybe in the US, I don't know, because I'm part of the European part you, of the Arrow. You're in Poland, right? Yeah, so I, I'm living in Poland, but uh, so basically we are used to go to the Europe events, so now the, the biggest one is Electronica in Germany. We will be there and we will have a lot of boards to give. So who wants to have the boards can come to our bus. You've been to Embedded World? Yeah, I've been there. And we also give away like, I don't know, but tens or hundreds of boards. And so basically we are buying from the vendors a lot of boards. So we are distributing and also we are giving away. So when this works out, uh, potentially this could become the new Raspberry Pi, right? This uh, could be big. The it dragon can, board, yeah. All this the stuff that we here. All yeah, these I think this solutions. is idea. Yeah. yeah. Bec even now, uh, I don't know if the the short the shared information. Yeah. They're working on the sh the shield with the narrowband IoT network, so it's just really cool. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, uh, where are you based in Poland? Uh, in Gdańsk. We have Gdańsk. the software house in the Gdańsk. Is uh, good for technology over there? Uh, yeah. We have like uh, for now we have uh, I think twelve guys. And we are expanding this to have 22 or something like that in next year. And we have from the embedded world till the, till the cloud. So, so how, how is it to, to work together with Shiratech? How is the collaboration? <laughs> so let's say uh, it's working. <laughs> it's working. So what, what's more planned for the future? OK, so first of all, about, first of all, about the collaboration. It works uh, very nice. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun to work with people from all over the world. Uh, we are visiting uh, Gdansk for every once in a while and uh, uh, see all the progress and all the software work that is being done there. Uh, about the future, so we started uh, with the 96 volt mezzanine. We have uh, about five mezzanines by, by now. We plan to develop uh, more mezzanines in the near future and release them. And also carrier boards, 96 volts carrier boards. Is, uh, this is the next uh, challenge that uh, we are going to face in the near future. Um, we have a lot of work. 
a lot of 96 uh, boards work to be done in the next year or so and uh, we are very excited about it. And uh, d does the whole 96 boards community uh, with the Lenaro and everything provide a good platform for you to do all this? It provides a great platform in the meaning that uh, we get uh, the Linux distribution uh, fitted to the board that we are using. We get all the software support. It's relatively, for me as a hardware de designer, it's relatively very easy to, to do the bring up process of a new board. Because all the software support, all the interfaces that you need to bring up are there and working. So it makes life easier, yes. Open source is great in this meaning. All right, but there's a long road to go still in open source. Many, let's say, beautiful challenges in the future that could happen to make all this, uh, you know, changing the world and everything. You know, you know what I mean? A lot is going on. A lot of beautiful things are going on in technology in general. <laughs> yes. All right, cool. And you're having fun too, right? With doing yes, all this thing. Yes, yes, sure. Because now uh, the arrow is, uh, let's say, the entering the, the world of the as a solution provider, not only distribution. So we are really going to be. The, this not only the board but also solution providers so we'll have like the uh, we'll make the products products for for our vendors so like the Shuratech we are working they are creating the hardware they are creating the software so it's a very good relation that we are we are close to the hardware so we're creating the software which is uh, really working good on this hardware so is the coolest kind of software development is when yeah, you're very it's, close to the hardware right yeah, it's very you cool. optimized for yes, the hardware that's it's the right. most interesting because we see that something's not working yeah. so we can you know we are just sending the one email without all this process and ask them, okay, could you change this? And then, the, for example, the, the Shiratic is replying, okay, you have to, for example, solder something to the board and test it then. So we are soldering, testing, and I said, okay, it, it is working. So thanks to that, let's say we can make the better software or make the better boards. And then you can provide it to customers and they can ask to make the software or they can create by themselves. How hard is it to develop a new app? Or new so application for this. It's, uh, to be honest with you, creating on this kind of project is very amazing, and I think that everybody from our team is working after the working hours because this is so so interesting. So we have the new hardware. You can do whatever you want with this hardware. You can even change the 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 the, the hardware layout, whatever, by by contacting the guys. And so I would say that so it is easy. For example, one of these, right? Yep. Uh, it, there's a lot of potential. There's a lot of new applications that could be developed for this, right? Yep. It could be like, I don't know, for a cow or something to, yeah. to check where they are. I don't know, what, but there's so many potential applications. So that means you have to limit yourself and say, I only want to do this idea right now. I don't want to have too many ideas you know, or something. Yeah, so the best idea that you are, let's say, network independent, so you don't have to use the Wi-Fi. Like now, I, we had on the Wi-Fi DNS problem that the hotel was providing DNS with the private IP and we need to change and modify the board. So with the LTE, we don't have this kind of problems. We just plug it and play. We have the SIM cards and it's really easy to have the, the, the demo working over network. And I think that the future is like most of the sensors, the different, uh, we will, I think, we will use the LTE or the narrowband IoT to communicate not only the Bluetooth, like for the gateways. So I think we will get rid of this kind of gateways. Cool. So looking forward to this kind of uh, 96 boards, huge success in the future. Maybe thanks to thanks to your your work. Yeah, thank you. So one more thing about uh, the potential that you mentioned about uh, these boards. Now IoT is booming, and everything is getting connected. And uh, for example, with this modem, the LTE Cat4 modem, you can connect any device that needs the high bandwidth and need to transfer a lot of data. So we have this uh, solution for uh, this kind of project. On the other hand, we have a very similar uh, uh, mezzanine. Maybe. I'll... This one uh, is a new LTE mezzanine that we are just launching. Uh, actually, this is uh, just from the product, uh, from the production facility. We got it a few days ago. The first one out of the SMT. Yeah, yeah, something kind of, <laughs> kind of yeah. And uh, this is, for example, on the for the other end of the project. Uh, this gives you LTE connection, but in a very low bandwidth. So if you are talking about uh, the cow that you want to know where it is and monitor uh, what is it doing and uh, how is the milk production going on, this uh, this solution could be great because it's uh, low power. Yeah. 
like low, uh, lower, Lo longer range? It has, the range is the same because okay. it, uh, it's connected to the cellular network, but if you need a solution that uh, can need to deliver a very low bandwidth, small quantities of data, uh, 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 it needs uh, less power, it can be running on battery for a few years even, so uh, this could be the solution. So we have a solution for every project, for the high, for the high end, for uh, high bandwidth applications and also for low bandwidth applications. But to make a new solution uh, uh, sometimes is expensive, right? So you have to limit yourself how many uh, things you want to do, but uh, it seems, looks like you're doing so many already. We do so many because uh, Shuratech Solution is uh, in a very interesting position. Our mother company, AY Electronics, is a supply chain manager. Uh, so they are experts in getting uh, d uh, devices. They have huge warehouses with all the devices uh, you want. Uh, for hardware designer, it's like a kid getting into a candy store. So we have uh, access to a lot of devices. Uh, they have their own uh, uh, manufacturing facility. So if I design a new board, uh, the production cycle is very fast, it's very short, and I have the ability to deliver uh, uh, new products very fast. And this is the main reason that in a few months we already delivered five, uh, different, five different products and more to come. And what are the prices for these? Uh, it depends, uh, you know, uh, of course the price is good, it's the best price, but it's yeah. de it depends how much Aero wants to earn. Yeah. Uh, approximately because uh, Aero's business is, is not just the development boards, it's like, you know, the components. Yeah. So people, it, it, they it, start it, with the development board, but maybe they want to buy after that one million pieces later, right? So that's a whole different yeah. consideration, right? But, uh, some of the boards, like the LTE Cat 4 board, it's a little expensive. It's not that expensive, but it costs because the LTE modem costs uh, a lot of money. So what, 80, 100, something? Uh, around uh, 100 and something. Yeah. But it's the high-end solution, high-end solution. The rest of the mezzanines are very cheap. Uh, it's development board, uh, the Bosch sensor mezzanine should be very cheap. The, the, uh, the LT narrowband uh, modem is also going to be very cheap and this is why we think it's going to be uh, a very attractive solution for, IOT, for uh, a lot of IoT applications. It's going to be in a very affordable price. Nice, and uh, when you're talking about the Bosch, uh, the Bosch is good for what? Okay, so other than the modems, we have the Bosch sensor mezzanine. Uh, a whole bunch of Bosch sensors on A there. whole bunch of five uh, Bosch, Bosch sensors, starting from uh, temperature, magnetic sensor, uh, accelerometer, uh, continuing with the uh, barometric pressure and uh, gas and all those kind of sensors, uh, all uh, on a single board. Gas also. Yeah, yeah. So uh, all of them on a single board and you can uh, develop the, 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 the amount of application that you can use it is huge, it's, it's actually huge, yeah. Nice, and the, the last one? The last one is the FPGA board. The FPGA board is very interesting because uh, in the middle here we have uh, Altera or uh, Intel PSG Max 10 FPGA. It's a programmable device, of course, uh, but uh, this board it can serve as a development platform for FPGA, uh, if, especially for people who want to get started developing FPGA. It's a very nice board. Yeah. But as it is, if you don't want to uh, develop an FPGA and you want to use it as is, it's actually a bridge, a bridge between the 96 boards on one hand to Arduino, Raspberry Pi, and Grove. So it takes four ecosystem, four uh, uh, development platforms and combine, combine them into one uh, solution. So you can have uh, 96 boards and use any Arduino shield or any Raspberry Pi hat that you want uh, using this board. And uh, uh, the price is a little bit higher, right, for this kind of board? Uh, no, actually it's very affordable. It, the, the pricing is very attractive for this one because we made it uh, with the cooperation uh, with Intel and we get a good price for the main component. Uh, the price will be surprising for this one. Surprising? Yeah. You have no idea? I have an idea, but I'm not uh, secret, sure that, uh, that I'm allowed to tell. Ah, okay. But, but uh, it, it's very, it, it has a very attractive pricing. What I'm hoping is uh, that Intel is very happy with Lenaro. 
uh, Intel should be a big member, right? And come and make some ARM chips. This is a this is an ARM uh, FPGA. There's an ARM in there. Yeah. This is a 28 nanometer. This one or? Yeah, I can't remember exactly. Yeah, it's one how of those. Many nanometers, but, but they also have a 14 one and. Yeah, so that's great. So that's yeah. working out. Yeah. Cool. All right. So thanks a lot. Thank you very much for all this demonstration here at Chibus. Thank I you. I hope you have fun at the Lenaro Connect. Thank you. Yeah, Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye.